in our last video, we started work on our schedule of cost of goods manufactured. We went through, we looked at some various accounts, we identified them as either being material related, labor, or overhead related. Now we're going to start preparing the actual schedule. So, we're going to start our schedule like we start most things in accounting. We start with a title. And just like your income statement, your balance sheet, your statement of uh, retained earnings, all of those financial statements, this is a three-line title. And the first line is the name of the company, Bill's Baggage Company. So let's get started. Of course, I need to get my pen tool out. We are doing a three-line title, Bill's Baggage company. And the next line is the name of the statement we're preparing. And the name of this statement is a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Schedule of cost of goods manufactured. The last line is for the period. And this is for the year ended December 31st, 2012. So just like an income statement, this is for the year ended or for the period ended. And in this case, it's December 31st, 2012. All right. So we said the cost to manufacture any product is the cost of the material, the labor, and the overhead. And that's what we want to summarize in this schedule of cost of goods manufactured. So we'll start with the material. And I'm going to do a computation here that you're going to see again and again in accounting. So let's take a look at this computation. We're going to summarize those material accounts, purchases of raw material, raw materials inventory January 1st, raw materials inventory December 31st. Those are the three materials accounts, but we're going to do it in a logical way. So I'm going to call this my direct materials section, DM. Uh, and in my direct materials section, we're going to start with our beginning raw materials inventory. Our raw materials inventory from January 1st. So our raw materials inventory at the beginning of the period was $15,000. I'll explain why I do it in this order after we finish the whole section. I think it'll make good sense. And again, even if you don't understand it well, I think you can get this just by practicing. Practice, 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 and you'll get comfortable. Uh, the next line down is to add in our purchases of raw materials. So I'm going to add in purchases of raw materials. And our purchases here were $40,000. I make a subtotal here. And this subtotal is called raw materials available for use. I'll just shorthand that as RM available. Now I want you to be careful. You know, I use a lot of abbreviations and a lot of shorthands. Your instructor might not be like me. They might want you to write out the whole thing. And in fact, they're probably right to do that. But I, I use shorthands because I'm a bit lazy. So I've taken my beginning raw materials, I've added the purchases, I've subtotaled the raw materials available. Now I've got to deduct my ending raw materials. So I'm going to deduct raw materials from December 31st, and that was 35000 My grand total here is raw materials used. That's the number we were after. Our raw materials used is $20,000. Now let's again make some sense about what we're doing. We want to figure out how much material we've used. And so how do I figure out how much material I've used? I take my beginning inventory and say, OK, I had 15,000 in the, you know, in my inventory storage uh, before I started the year on January 1st. I had $15,000 worth of raw materials ready to go. During the year, I purchased $40,000 worth of inventory. So if I take the 15 grand I started with, I say, oh, I purchased 40,000. That means I had $55,000 worth of inventory that I could have possibly used. If I used all of my inventory, I would have used 55,000. But I know I didn't use all my inventory. How do I know I didn't use it all? Because I had a bunch left over. We had $35,000 worth of inventory left over. So $55,000 was the most I could possibly use. That's the raw materials I had available. 
35,000 is what I have left over. Well, how much material did I use? I must have used $20,000 worth of raw material. And so that's why we put the number 20, and that's, that's a very important number on our schedule of cost of goods manufacturing. We've used 20 grand of raw material. At this point in my class, I would pause and I would say, okay, class, any questions? And, you know, there might be some questions. If you have questions, go ahead and write them at the bottom of this, uh, you know, make a comment, and I'll certainly be happy to answer them. And certainly you can rewind and kind of rewatch that and make sure you're following along. Uh, the next step here is direct labor. I write labor with a U because I'm Canadian. Uh, so direct labor is 10,000. I don't see any other direct labor accounts that we identified above, so I'm just going to use that 10,000. Now, you might say, well, why don't I subtotal it like I kind of did with materials? Well, materials, we can buy materials but not use it. With labor, when you pay for it, you're kind of using it. You can't put your worker in a storage closet and save them for next year. You know, you paid for the $10,000 of labor, that means you've used it. So that's just our total labor. The last section is overhead. And for overhead, we just summarize these overhead accounts. There's five there, so I'm going to just list them out. So the first one I saw on the list there was depreciation of factory equipment. So I'm just going to note depreciation factory and our factory depreciation was six thousand dollars uh, next up is utilities factory five thousand dollars next on our list indirect materials ten thousand dollars The next one on our list, indirect labor four. And, oh, not 40, just four. There we are. And the final one on our list, factory supervisor salary, five. So we've got all of our MOH costs. Let's total those up. You can see that that is $30,000. And that is our total overhead cost. So at the start of this thing, we said the cost of any product is the material plus the labor plus the overhead. And that is indeed our total manufacturing cost. Uh, so 30 plus 10 plus 20, that's $60,000. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, am I not done now? Is this not a, a done deal? Uh, I've added my material, my labor, and my overhead. Aren't I done? Well, the answer, unfortunately, is no. And the reason the answer is no is because there's some products that we've started, but we haven't finished yet. There's some work in process. So yeah, this is the cost I put into manufacturing, but it's not the cost of goods manufactured. It's not the actual cost of the, the goods that I manufactured. So we have to include work in process in our computation here. I want you to look at this material calculation where we take our beginning inventory, we add purchases, we deduct ending inventory to figure out our raw materials used. We're going to do the same thing with work in process inventory. And in fact, we're going to do the same type of calculation with finished goods inventory. We're adding beginning inventory, we're deducting ending inventory. You might not follow that, and I hope you have followed the example I've given, but even if you don't follow it, just remember, add beginning, deduct ending, and you're going to be on the right track. We're always adding beginning inventory, deducting ending. So we're going to add beginning whip. There's our beginning whip, January 1st. There's our work in process, 24,000. So I'm going to add beginning whip. Uh, I should have put the date there, not beginning, but whip, January 1st, and it's 24,000. 
we're going to subtotal. And we're going to deduct ending with. Ugh. Whip on December 31st. Old habits. And I don't think it's the big deal if you did write beginning and ending. I think it's the same difference. Our whip on December 31st was 29,000. So 84 minus 29 is 55,000. Underline it twice. That's the bottom line. This is our cost of goods manufactured and uh, I'm going to just format it properly dollar signs at the top of each column and at the bottom and at this point I have in good form a schedule of cost of goods manufactured I hope you've understood this video well if not please feel free to post comments or questions please free all feel free also to um, Rewatch, you know, if there's any part of this that confused you. In our next video, we're going to walk through the schedule of cost of goods sold, as well as the company's income statement. That's it for this video. Please uh, feel free to click through and watch the next one.